What a big show we have for you today. First of all, the Cardinals won and scored points on Thursday Night Football. And, of course, the big trade. Christian McCaffrey is now a San Francisco 49er. How does that impact his value? Who's left over from each team to pivot to? And one of the coolest, most important streaks that has ever happened in the fantasy footballer's history. You'll find out what that is towards the end of the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Friday, October 21st, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jam-packed episode. Huge news. This is the the big one. What a Thursday night. We got a hold of... Christian McCaffrey's camp and the 49ers and we got a hold of the Panthers and we said we know you got something brewing we need some time with this don't break it during a show don't break it right after a show releases break it as our uh, hometown team runs away with a game on Thursday Night Football where they scored more points in that game the two teams than we had seen in Thursday night in a long long time probably if you add up all the scores of every Thursday night match of this week or this year now the the funny part was the sentiment in the fantasy community was essentially those points were the most meaningless points ever it was Keontae Ingram it was Juwan Johnson although not meaningless to those that listen to Mike the fantasy hit me and right because Juwan he <laughs> took care of business oh the garbage man can yeah <laughs> His first catch didn't come until like no. His first catch was right at the beginning his of the second, game. His second his second catch was the touchdown he catch. Was, oh, okay, yes. He was the first target of the I, game. Okay. Look, Mike was right. Um, <laughs> we just have to live with that, Jason. It's not a reality. I want to acknowledge, but Jawan Johnson got it done by hook or by crook. But we we talked to those teams. They worked it out. Monstrous trade. It's going to dominate the beginning of the conversation today. We'll review Thursday night football. We've gotten other news to talk about the fantasy forecast and we probably won't even have time for wheel of shame today <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh uh as i set a is a record-breaking yeah. level of shame today <laughs> well that um, should be fun just a big show judge giamatti on. in the building hey and then, uh, papa josh sitting next to him uh <laughs> papa josh for those that don't know who he is our community manager. Josh loves the cameras. The oh, he does. The Lord of the Discord. Okay. Oh, right. I like that. He manages. Although he still doesn't know how to say the word right. That's okay. He's, Discord. He, he's our um, elder statesman here yeah. at uh, Footland headquarters. But uh, there, there's just so much going on. Very excited to talk about it. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, we give uh, give a little something special to a supporter from jointhefoot.com, a $100 gift card to Fantasy Champs, and today's winner, Cody Mack. Ooh. Cody Mack supporting us over on Patreon. Thank you so much. Turn up the Mac. So, 100 bucks coming your way. Nice. Pretty we'll sweet. Get, get that swag, that champ swag. Uh, yeah, be a Mac daddy with a championship belt. Okay. I can't... Uh, I can't decide what to do in what order on today's show because I feel like – can we just get into the main event or do we have to go through Thursday I would, night? I would go through the game first. Fine. Here's the headlines. If you started Eno, Eno Benjamin, you were very happy. 12 for 92, had a 45-yard run, scored a touchdown. Congratulations. If you started DeAndre Hopkins, same old Hopkins, 14 targets, 10 catches, 103 yards, didn't score, still gave you a great game. Yeah. I, Looked it, himself. It was one of those things where a week ago – I wasn't sure if DeAndre Hopkins was going to be the one or the two. And then when Hollywood went down, it's like, oh, man, DeAndre Hopkins is just going to be right back to his 
10 plus targets every single game, the centerpiece of this offense. And sure enough, the fact that uh, Marshawn Lattimore was absent for this game, we kind of knew this was going to be uh, a Hopkins game, but it was nice to see him dominate and still take the role of leadership on the team. The, the big brother, the arm around Kyler when he's upset, the calming force. Yeah, he was great, and he's going to be great the rest of the season. 14 targets on the other side of the field went to Chris Olave. Yeah, man. Went 7 for 106, kind of always open. I mean, we talked about Byron Murphy lining up against their best receiver. It made no difference to Chris Olave, who was able to find space. I think his, his specialty this entire season has been just whooping up on the zone defenses and finding space for his quarterback to uh, get him the ball. He had a 41-yard catch in this game. Uh, I think we'll see Jameis Winston here soon. Yeah. But, the, the, the I mean, madness, that that was the thing you wanted to see with Olave. The madness of NFL versus fantasy football. Andy Dalton, like, the box score is delightful. So good. For fantasy football, 360, four passing touchdowns. He did have the three interceptions, so that, you know, the minus six points. Uh, he had but, a, he, didn't he have, like, 20 rushing yards, too? Did he? I think so. I mean, he's... Good. Yeah, 24 21. for 21. I mean, he's he's going to be one of the best fantasy quarterbacks on the week, but for the NFL, he really cost them the game with those back-to-back -back, uh, pick sixes right before this, right before halftime. I believe halftime. yesterday Jason made a joke about Andy Dalton throwing the ball to the Cardinals. Yeah, I, I said all you got to do to prep for this, no matter which quarterback that is, it's just put your cornerbacks on the jugs machine because the ball's coming your way. And and, I mean, he threw it straight to him, and uh, three picks. That was enough to uh, doom the Saints in this game. Alvin Kamara, it wasn't a good one, but he did. Oh, you're talking about garbage man. Like, yeah, he did garbage man himself to seven for 56. I guess that, what, that, that turns the game into a very – um, oh, you know, yeah. he didn't score, but he was good. But if yeah. you're yeah, PPR, half PPR, he perfectly fine. You can look at that, that fantasy output and be happy. Dennis Allen, like this dude loves Mark Ingram. I, I, I feel like I saw Mark Ingram on the field all the time. And then in situations where it's check that ball down to Kamara, it's he's right there. And Andy Dalton would say, nay, I'm going down the field, which worked a, a good amount last week or last night, but also turned into a bunch of interceptions. And then when Mark Ingram is there for the check down, he's like, oh, I got I to gotta get him the ball until the very end. And then it was just Kamara garbage time. Not a great game for Kyler fantasy-wise. Just one passing touchdown. Uh, ran for 30 yards. I will say the biggest disappointment, I think, for a lot of fantasy players, and it looked great to start the game. Rondell Moore had a 31-yard a, a catch. The first they catch for the Cardinals. And a the uh, end, the uh, end. A, a very sweet uh, fade <laughs> to j just Mighty Mouse on the outside. I'm not it, really. It, it basically worked. It, it, it just he just didn't bring it in in time. Yeah, it, it all it worked until it didn't work. Uh, but Rondale was on the outside, like which was the devastation of his his output. He Rondale can't play there. Two targets. I expect once Robbie Anderson is acclimated, that will shift back. So if you've got Rondale. That this week sucks, it, it, but just take that on the chin and know that Rondale will be better. And and uh, if you didn't notice, AJ Green <laughs> didn't play, basically. Yes. So he was uh, active, but not on the field. Correct. Correct. Delightful. <laughs> and they won. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yes. Keep going. All right. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. And away we go. The Panthers traded superstar Christian McCaffrey to the San Francisco 49ers. The Panthers get a second, third, fourth in Next 2023 year. and a fifth round pick in 2024. Oh, baby. McCaffrey's under contract through 2025. The San Francisco trot arrives. Whoo, boy. Yeah. This, uh, is, this, is, this is massive. This is... Uh, just a fantasy football, NFL football, game-breaking trade. You don't see them often. And um, let's just begin with the Christian McCaffrey okay. fallout because number three running back on the season for fantasy players despite being on 
the worst offense in football, going through the coaching change, three you know different quarterbacks all the time. You kind of knew what the recipe in Carolina was. The recipe for McCaffrey was you're hoping for eight to ten catches. Uh, the touchdowns are just bonuses, but he's giving you 15 to 20 points a week, and he heads to San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan, and they paid. I mean, I was looking for nicknames for Christian McCaffrey this morning. San Francisco based nicknames. Okay. That's where that San Francisco trot came from. Somebody else's nickname called him the mortgage. Oh, I loved that one. <laughs> Which I mean <laughs> I mean they yeah. paid up. Yes, they did. Yeah, from a fantasy football perspective right now, if you have Christian McCaffrey, you're you're torn. Because I think that he can score more fantasy points as a San Francisco 49er than he can as a Carolina Panther. They didn't send all of this uh, capital and mortgage their future to have him come in and be a, in a timeshare. He's going to be the everything in the running game. They will pass the ball to him. There's all these questions. Well, the San Francisco 49ers don't pass to the running back very much over the last, since uh, 2017. I think they're the third lowest rate in the league throw that out the window. It doesn't matter. They have Christian McCaffrey and they have Kyle Shanahan. They will scheme plenty of passes to Christian McCaffrey. So his fantasy value, I think, on a per-game basis, should go north. Yes. But you just got an extra bye week because I don't know that you can play him. I mean, you might be forced to, but I imagine that our advice is you can't play Christian McCaffrey this week unless it's an absolute emergency like you can't well, rely on him well let's let's tease that out a little bit put some scenarios out there it's a bad bye week right like you're missing big players from big teams Christian McCaffrey uh you know last night my my odds of him suiting up for the game were at about 95 five that he wouldn't but then some other reports came out and they said well maybe they'll use him in goal line packages and nothing else he's got to learn the playbook but, you know, of all the positions we've seen have success off the street, see ball, take ball, run forward, uh, probably better than what you've got, even if he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, if he's active, I think that's when fantasy players will be really pushed to the brink of their sanity. Mike, you have him. Yes. I've got him in a dynasty league where I needed him desperately. Like my, I was talking to Jason before the game. I'm like, if I don't play Christian McCaffrey – my like flex pivot options this week due to the bye weeks are like Greg Dulcich or oh, Marvin Jones nice. or Kyle Phillips. So I can't I don't think I could bring myself to sit an active McCaffrey for those options. That's, but that's but the expectation I mean the range of outcomes could be it could be three touches for I, no I, touchdowns. I mean, if you don't get a touchdown this week from Christian McCaffrey, then you're going to get sub three fantasy points the the floor is zero so if you're saying you got like, some news here brooks i'm sorry it's it's just that shanahan is saying it's still it's up in the air but shanahan's not, talking about it yeah. what's the quote brooks read it to us um shanahan i'm still up in the air whether we're going to be able to get him in there for sunday or not yeah I, if it, so for instance um you know if if there is uh a player like michael carter michael carter is not a great fantasy asset, but I know he's playing football. I know he's going to get snaps and get a couple targets and be much more involved in the game. And he still has a chance at touchdowns. Obviously yeah. we've seen Brees go down to the one. Like I would play Michael Carter ahead of Christian McCaffrey. That's the level that I'm talking about for obviously only this week. He's got like a day and a half. He's flying to San Francisco unexpectedly and trying to get involved. So that's, that's where I think most fantasy managers are probably going to bench Christian McCaffrey this week. I think the best case scenario for fantasy football is he just they declare him inactive. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, like for my team, and I'm sure there's plenty of other teams out there. My best. Whoa, we're going with oh, it's just for my team. Well, I was, but oh. then the music just turned off. <laughs> so don't worry about it. It was okay. it was for Elijah Mitchell and Jeff Wilson. Ah, yes. Uh, my number one pivot option to my bench this week should a running back like Christian McCaffrey suddenly be marked out uh, was Jeff Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> so the best case scenario, I guess, for me... Clarity. ...is that Christian McCaffrey, in fact, sits out this game. Because if he is active, 
gee, but you can't play Jeff Wilson because the goal line's going to go to Christian McCaffrey. And Jason, it's, your dynasty team has Elijah Mitchell and situation. Jeff Wilson. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell. I remember you like you, you played football. Your career is over. I mean, I mean for fantasy purposes, it's done. It's, it's, yeah. it's completely done. It's, but barring injury. Right, right. Yeah, obviously Jeff Wilson, Elijah Mitchell, they are great insurance options for Christian McCaffrey. But I, I, how could Christian McCaffrey, a model of health, ever get injured as a San Francisco 49er? Oh, San Francisco 49ers. Don't you dare. They, I mean, they never deal with injuries. Um, at the running back at the position? Run, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is one of those, like, you're really asking, asking for trouble here, mortgaging the future for Christian McCaffrey. Uh, as a as a Cardinals fan in division, I absolutely love that they have spent this kind of capital on a running back. That their future is going I don't, to get worse. I don't worse. love it. Oh man, this I, has been the recipe to win Super Bowls, and 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 the the Rams don't have draft picks. Work pretty good on smashing the Cardinals with that recipe, and the Forty ers they are definitely the favorite in this division now. You yeah they it's mortgages. Not like is, the Cardinals have any draft picks either. Mortgages. Well, I mean, they have them in the draft, but they won't be anything. Right, because of Steve Kime. Yeah, yeah. The, the mortgage is perfect because they're they're betting their future on Christian McCaffrey. If if McCaffrey stays healthy, the 49ers offense is going to be, I would mean, just at sensational, and he's going to be used a ton. So, I mean, just to summarize it for me, short term, you got McCaffrey. Super unfortunate due to you have a bye week this week. Next week is the Rams. That's not the matchup that you love, but he's still CMC, and it's San Francisco. And then he has another, the, the a actual real bye, bye week. week. So short term here, it does kind of stink. But if you can withstand some victories, hopefully, uh, without Christian McCaffrey, then I think down the stretch he will be much better. Now to the Carolina Panthers, the move is – I. For me, it's Deonta Foreman. If you're going to pick up one of the running backs, you have him, you have Chuba Hubbard. Chuba last year came in with uh, with McCaffrey's injury. Didn't he was fine? You know, like he just he didn't seem like a player that the the Panthers could really rely on. I think that's why they went out and got Deonta Foreman. Now, Deonta Foreman could be you know this is. The success story of the Achilles recovery now that he's, I don't know, like four or five years past it, he's an interesting player as in he will get a bunch of volume. He's on a crap offense, a crap offense that got way worse. I mean, you want to play the sad music? Let's pour one out for our our dude DJ Moore. What is this? <laughs> like, the Carolina Panthers should put him, let him take a sabbatical for the season. Like, help DJ Moore out because this, they're just – they're killing his I career. I think they are helping him out. No, I'm saying like they got make, rid of Robbie Anderson and Christian McCaffrey. There is only one man there. Don't make him play. That's my that's my solution. Yeah, uh, look, m many more targets go in DJ Moore's direction. Um, so it stinks for the team to be bad, but I mean, you're talking about nine, ten targets a game that we're going to Christian McCaffrey of late. So maybe that's helpful for DJ Moore. Uh, just he needs targets. They but do have to play offense. They will force the Panthers uh, against all of our eyeballs' will yeah. to play on offense. Uh, Three downs at a time is not going to get it done. So, yeah, Deontay Foreman is he, going to be the guy. Yes, he's the one to pick up, not Chuba. It's not going to be uh, – Chuba will be involved. This will be a more of a committee than what we ever saw with Christian McCaffrey. It feels like Ingram on the Texans last year. Is what sure. it feels like with Deontay Foreman. Which has relevance and is a startable asset from time to time important. So you absolutely need to be picking up Deontay Foreman if he's available in your leagues for sure. Wild. Yeah. Crazy. Yes, and yes. Dy Dynasty McCaffrey, just to, I got to have my own bow for this story. Sure. It's worth a conversation because you, you just didn't. The whole rebuild process, right? Like you knew that the Carolina Panthers, it was done, right? They're, they're heading towards a new rookie we would have been spending the entire offseason going, will this rookie get the chance to throw the ball to Christian McCaffrey? Right. Is this going to be the Baker Mayfield didn't dump it to him, so is this guy, you know, it clears some things up. He's under contract until 2025. They spent all these draft picks. The 49ers are featuring Christian McCaffrey in the offense unless he's hurt for years to come. 
it makes me excited as a dynasty it's manager. It's a huge upgrade for Christian McCaffrey's dynasty future because this is an investment as well. This is almost like getting a brand new contract because even though you know you you've got players that play, you know he obviously had money, he had a big contract, but we've seen that with the Todd Gurley's of the world where you can get cut if you stop playing that. This team is a brand new investment of draft capital into this player, bright bright future for several years all right there is other news elijah moore requested a trade from the jets and the team has no plans to trade him and yet he will not be active this week he missed practice due to this uh, so to a personal issue which right. we assume is his personal problems with not getting the ball and so yeah he's back to practice but he will not suit up this weekend and that makes Someone like Garrett Wilson, a little bit more sure. uh, realistic of a play. And the um, – who do you think – so it'll be interesting to see what Sertan does. I think I'd Sertan will be on Corey Davis. Okay. He's the outside wide sure. receiver snap-wise more, um, and that that's why I think Garrett Wilson will be an okay play this week. It's such an interesting situation of how do you handle these players of Elijah Moore, you know, he wa he wants to contribute. All football players want to win, but you also you if you're a wide receiver, you want to be involved in the game. You want to be a part of the reason why the team is winning. If you have zero targets, you are not a reason why the team is winning. You're just kind of along for the ride. And Elijah Moore, I'm sure he's looking over at you know like Denzel Mims and seeing what is happening. Of that guy, Denzel Mims, his career's done. Because they drafted him in the second round. They just didn't play him. They never gave him a, a real shot. They're, they refused to trade him. So, I, like, I feel for the player of what do you do? But then in, in the team, you can't just acquiesce to all. If if a player comes in and demands a trade, you can't just completely give in. It's it's a a very, very difficult situation. I, I, I certainly relate to wanting to be involved, especially when you're talented. I also have a harder time when you're winning football games. You know, that's a tough thing for anybody, right? You want to be involved. You want your opportunities. You just said at the beginning you think he wants to win. Well, he wants to be involved and win, yes. not just win. Um, but his future is murky now. I mean, we from a dynasty perspective, before the season, people wanted Elijah Moore. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's certainly no guarantee. I mean, the Moors might be on the move. Elijah, DJ, I mean, we don't know where their dynasty futures are going to end up. Yeah, I mean, they said that they will not trade him by the deadline. I believe it. I, th I think I like what the Jets are doing. I like the fact that they're saying, you know what? You, you, you sit down. Calm down. You're, we are in charge here. Calm the – We're not yeah. trading you. We like you. We want you to be a part of this. So I, I, I respect how the Jets are handling this. But but they – But they might not use them. Yeah, but if you're not – In the future, right? If you're right? not getting played and you're not getting targets. I, I think that's really – they are going to play him. They are going to target him. This was – I mean, if you look at how these games have gone down and how they've won uh, – Yeah, Garrett Wilson had one catch. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're targeting anyone. It, it, I, I, this is really – I feel like he was just kind of being a baby. And they said, T go go take a timeout. I don't think it was the one game. I think it's been the entire season. Crisscross applesauce I mean, in the corner right now. He had 10 targets Face in, the wall. in week three. From Joe Flacco. Yeah. And then 4-4-0. Four, four, yeah. He's, but, he's looking at Zach Wilson and going, this is my future. It's just funny because it's like Garrett Wilson's done nothing since Zach Wilson came in. I mean, when Elijah Moore gets back on the field next week, that's going to be a squeaky wheel out there. We'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah. Except for the uh, the quarterback can't can't help support a squeaky wheel. Uh, Darren Waller. Didn't, I don't have WD forty. I know he didn't play. Darren Waller or didn't practice. Told reporters he probably won't play in week seven. Hunter Renfro was also on the injury report. He's kind of the de facto. You know, oh, he'll he'll get the benefit of Darren Waller being out. If they both don't play, we are back with Mac, baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mac Collins looks like sure. a, a good DFS play. Or um, honestly, Devonte Adams should just soak up targets. We we know from week one, what did he have? Like seventeen targets. That that, that could just come again this week. And then uh, Mark Andrews didn't practice on Wednesday and Thursday. That one is. And J.K. Dobbins isn't practicing. A little scary. The J.K. Dobbins, I'm, I'm not surprised by it. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he doesn't play this week. The fact that he had a knee aggravation and it swelled up and he couldn't play in the second half, 
if he comes out, I mean, I'm, I'm not playing J.K. Dobbins un, under any circumstance if he's active. If he's active and Kenyon Drake's af, active, I'm, I'm putting Drake in the lineup, but I don't expect him to play. The Mark Andrews thing is really interesting because to not play on a Thursday is not a day of rest. That's an injury, and this is marked as a knee, and so I'm, I was already this morning trying to find out like, you know, like, oh, they're East Coast. Are they practicing? with right. What's the Mark Andrews information? The, the Mark Andrews pivot is Isaiah Likely to me. Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they need to throw the ball to someone there. And um, maybe Rashad Bateman, if he gets back on the field and Mark right, Andrews is right. missing, he could be a good start. Agreed. Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines, both full practice uh, participants. Nice. That's so great. You, yeah, that's that's great. I, I don't know if Naeem Hines has fully cleared the concussion protocol. He's back practicing fully, but we'll need that like report that he is allowed to play. Jonathan Taylor is dealing with you know foot and ankle injuries. If he's practicing in full, he's good to go. DeAndre Swift still limited. Tyler Lockett sidelined with the hamstring on Thursday. That's not a good sign. They may have to give him a week. Yeah, I mean, we we saw this pop up last week, and then he played, but what well, did not do much. It was very disappointing. And I, I'm staying away from Tyler Lockett right now. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and back into the fantasy forecast. All right. Yesterday we covered the Falcons, Bengals, Lions, Cowboys, Colts, Titans, Packers, Commanders, Buccaneers, Panthers, and the Giants, Jaguars. Seven games left, starting with the 2-4 and four Cleveland Browns traveling to Baltimore to take on the Ravens, who are 3-3. Three and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Baltimore minus 6 and hey, a half. Hey, Andy, mind if we hit this? Fantasy Forecast. <laughs> you got deuced. <laughs> you got deuced. I love it. Oh. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, we could always open the segment. <laughs> I've never been deuced right in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> well done, Brooksy. I love it. Uh, Wish I had the boom shakalaka drop. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, – now do you feel like we can talk about this? Do you yes, feel sir. better? Yeah. Okay. I was very confused. Papa Josh, can you keep him in check over there? <laughs> you can't. I don't know what happens when Al Borland's out of here, but – Hey, I ain't we, messing with Brooks, man. Yeah. yeah. We got to have those sweet drops. That's fair. That's fair. I was frightened a little bit. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. At least the lights stayed on. Uh, <laughs> Cleveland, Baltimore, the DraftKings Sportsbook line. Baltimore minus six and a half at home. Over under is 46 points. Uh, goodness. Um, both of these teams have had struggles closing ball games out. Cleveland's allowed 67 points in the fourth quarter of games. Baltimore has been outscored by 42 points in the fourth quarter of games. In fact, all of their losses. Giving up late leads. Uh, I I saw a uh, a tweet that was specifically looking at all the three and three teams and how many seconds they have been they have spent losing their games and it's you know like a a, a normal chart for all teams and then there's this little sliver for the Baltimore Ravens who have basically been winning all of their games at all times blowing everyone out but have had three just disastrous collapse losses at the end of the game. This this game, I, I'm going to assume when we talk about this that Mark Andrews is playing and active because that changes a lot yes, for me in this game. So we, I think we just have to move forward under the uh, pretense that he has his number one weapon. At least with the way John Harbaugh has still talked about it being rest. Like, I don't know if that's gamesmanship. It certainly could be. We, coaches, they do that. Um Rashawn Bateman, it'd be nice if he was back out on the field. Uh, he's been limited in practices. If he's active, the Browns are 20th against opposing fantasy uh, wide receivers, but 27th against them in terms of schedule adjusted. So they've been one of the worst. Bateman is a start, right, if he's it, back? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like flex level. Okay. I mean, it's, it's not a full confidence. We haven't – it's been big plays. You haven't seen, you know, just an overwhelming target volume going to, to Bateman. So he's – that. Wide receiver three ish. Ooh, you guys update, were... update from a minute ago, guys. Oh, Andrews is at practice. Okay. Oh, all right. Wow. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, way to deuce us again. Did uh, Did they say Some anything news. about J.K. Dobbins? Dobbins is still mm, sitting. Still sitting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they, I was going to say, Jason, you were bullish on Kenyon Drake as a fab pickup early in the week. It looks like his pathway is very clear here. Gus Edwards still not activated. Um, yes, Justice Hill is there, 
but it's Kenyon Drake. I mean, he performed, right? He wasn't like he got the opportunity and failed. He uh, he was, was 10 for 119. He had 10 for 119, looked the part, and you could say, well, it was, you know, the, the, the matchup was really well for how the Baltimore Ravens run the ball and the struggles that the Giants have. It's also the same for the Browns. The yeah. Browns have been terrible against running backs. They have given up the 30th most points to the position. So I think Kenyon Drake is actually a fine play. I, I, don't, I agree. I, I don't mind starting him at all on that side of the ball. I, I think there is maybe an outside chance that Gus Edwards is active for I this game. I think so. Yeah, the, with the timeline, Gus Edwards has, either has to play this week or next week. So if you've been stashing him, it's next week at the latest okay and then uh any other storylines like if andrews is out there the likely uh play is out you know Correct. not going to happen so you know duvernay has not been impressive really hasn't been a flex worthy well, player yeah and Duver if bateman is back duvernay is just he, you're hoping that he gets two targets and one of them is a touchdown on the other side uh nicholas chubb is in cream hunt man he's He's got two finishes inside the top 24. He His game log is very consistent in terms of he gets, you know, 13 to 15 opportunities uh, a game. But if he – and he either gets you eight points in a half-point scoring format or he gets you a big game because he actually scores a touchdown. So I guess if, if you need a floor from a running back, Kareem Hunt still feels fine against this matchup. And he'd be one of those guys that you play ahead of. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Would, Christian yes. McCaffrey. Yeah, because you just you, – Christian McCaffrey could have two touches for two touchdowns, but are you in fantasy football you at least have to chase volume. The wild thing is is the odds of the 49ers losing this weekend are pretty high, right? Like they play Kansas City, mm -hmm. and if they lose that game, they're under 500. Yep. And uh, the whole division right now, ha there's no above 500 teams in the division. All right, uh, Nick Chubb, of course. Yep. Amari Cooper was Jason's start of the week yesterday. Uh, start him up. And then David Njoku is the tight end seven on the year. Keep riding. Yep. Yeah, it looks pretty good right now. Ravens are 26th uh, against tight ends in our schedule-adjusted rankings. And I I think Donovan Peoples-Jones is kind of a, a sneaky fringe play. Over the past three weeks, he's been very involved. He's averaging four for 65 over that time period, two of those three games over 70 yards, and the Ravens are not a terrifying matchup. 21st if you adjust for schedule against fantasy wide receivers, so you, you could do worse as a dart throw. The New York Jets. The 4-2 and two New York Jets. That's right. Yeah. Taking on the 2-4 and four Denver Broncos. DraftKings Sportsbook line, though, giving drum. Denver uh, a minus one line here. I think about it every time, here. Jason. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> Over-under is just 38 and a half points. I'll take the under. Yeah, this is going to be... <laughs> Uh, troubling. Russell Wilson with his Wolverine blood is is going to play. Um, Zach Wilson, oh, since he's returned, the Jets are only averaging 25 pass attempts per game. You know, this is going to be a pretty tough one for the running game. Brees Hall and company. The Denver Broncos are a great defense, yeah, plain and are. simple. They're, they're awesome. They have a shutdown corner that will limit the opportunities of the passing game, and then they've been stuffing the run fifth against running backs they shut down everybody they, they i mean this is going to be a really hard and they're to, at home hard to score a game for the jets i agree with you completely i am not excited for anyone including my man Brees hall i'm still going to start him because it just takes one play with someone like that yeah they could be shut down all game and then break off a 60 yard touchdown run and or or a reception and you're fine so he's in your lineup but outside of that Things get better for him, maybe a Garrett Wilson, and you could try to – but we're talking when we bring those names up. That's not in your redraft league. That's not putting him in your flex. That's like in a, in a, in a DFS lineup where you've got to pay a certain dollar amount for guys. You're looking for values that are sneaky. That's where a Garrett Wilson is, is a good play. Other, outside of Brees Hall, I'm not touching the, the Jets. Yeah, and, and that includes Tyler Conklin. On the other side, Cortland Sutton, the last two weeks, the wide receiver 30, the wide receiver 70. And so it has not been good. We've talked about Sauce Gardner. You know, maybe you are a little nervous here. The Russell yeah. Wilson experience has been bad. The running game 
Look, none of these players, I don't care if we sit here and debate Melvin Gordon, Latavius Murray, and Mike Boone until we're blue in the face. None of their names are Javante Williams. Therefore, the running game is going to be worse than what we expected at the beginning of the year. Melvin Gordon is one of the most uh, nervous attempts to put, you know, players to put into your lineup mm -hmm. that you can get. And I look, do I, I have no idea. That's the honest truth. He's the quote starter because it looks better on his, his playing card. You know, this is an ego adjusted thing. I don't. He's a low end option to me, and he's about as low as it goes where I would go ahead of Christian McCaffrey. But would, would you go ahead of Latavius Murray? I, I, yeah, I would start Melvin Gordon in this game I, over over Latavius. But I, obviously, I have no idea. I really don't. Yeah, I, I don't either. But I, the the information we have of Melvin Gordon saying he's the starter or being told he's the starter, the coach saying he's the starter, that's that's the most we have to go off. So if you are making the, the Gordon Murray decision, if he fumbles, I guess I go Gordon. If he fumbles, you'll never see him again. Yeah, They I won't mean, even know where he is. They'll put out uh, APB. They won't know where he is. Yeah. The mirror dimension. The I milk mean, carton will have. Yeah, Melvin the milk Gordon carton. That's what I meant. Yeah, I mean he'll just be done. Um, Jerry Judy. Yeah, go, bleh, scary. Greg Dulcich <laughs> is more interesting because he was seventy-one percent of snaps last week. Yeah. Uh, the mustache obviously comes into play. It's very helpful. As as is the curly. I hair. mean, I admire this gentleman. Yeah. Greg Dulcich is a hero. Greg, I, yes, not all heroes wear capes. Right. All heroes have mustaches. That is exactly right. And the the, the flowing locks, the weird owl style hair, the socks with the sandals at practice, the short shorts. I uh, I think he's my favorite player in the history of the NFL. It's very possible. And he, in this particular matchup, look, the the, the Jets are twelfth in schedule adjusted against the tight end position. So it's it's not great. His quarterback situation will be. Uh, it'll be rust. It'll be suboptimal because it's either a uh, very injured Russell Wilson or it's a backup quarterback. So this might be a week you don't want to put him out there, but if you picked him up, it'd be good. Like this is a this is a good stash for the stash. Of, Would you uh, play him over Conklin situation. on the other side with with Elijah Moore missing and oh, Conklin? Man. Now Uzama got back out there last week. I I would play them. I would play Dulcich over. I the, think I'd give the Dulcich guys. the, the yes. go. He almost had two touchdowns last week. Yep. Yep. He was very involved. The Houston Texans at one three and one take on the one and four Las Vegas Raiders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is, uh, I believe, the Raiders minus seven. The over under forty six points. Both teams coming off the bye, and we're probably not going to have Darren Waller. So you know, we just we said it earlier. Matt Collins will have an opportunity if Renfro and Waller are not out there, and I would. Look, I'm willing to take that shot with Matt Collins. Sure. Uh, in a deeper league, over a like a you know Peoples Jones, you brought him up. You'd go Matt Collins. I'd go Matt, Matt Collins over Peoples Jones if Renfro and Waller are out. It's fine. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I would I would lean the Matt Collins side as well. This very well could be just a give it to Josh Jacobs thirty times yeah. against the Houston Texans who have not been able to stop the run against anyone other than Jacksonville. And Josh Jacobs has just been so involved. He's coming off of a bye. So he's got the extra rest. And, and going into the bye, he had 34 opportunities and 26 opportunities. They did not mind giving him massive volume, 89% of snaps, 81% of snaps. So I do expect with those other pass catchers out of the way and the sieve that is the Houston Texans run defense, Josh Jacobs should just have a monstrous game. Yeah, and you start Devontae Adams. Derek Carr, he hasn't had a three-touchdown game since week 13 of 2020. And Jason just gave you the prescription. I don't think he has a three-touchdown game in this one. You're looking for 202 and uh, gravy. The Texans are top 10 against quarterbacks, and it's not because they're <laughs> no. awesome. It's because teams get up on them, they score rushing touchdowns, and then the quarterback is unnecessary. So, yeah, this isn't a game where you start Derek Carr. Uh, on the other side, Damian Pierce. He has 93% of the Houston running back carry since week two. Play him. Yep. Brandon Cooks. Yep. Averaging eight targets a game. It it's nice to throw against the Raiders. Yeah, it hasn't been what you hoped for for Brandon Cooks, but they're 30 seconds in adjusted against quarterbacks, 28th adjusted against wide receivers. 30th against tight ends like they're the passing defense for the Raiders. They, they don't is discriminate. It's not existent. 
You just they just come on down, throw the ball on us, please. Yeah, everybody gets something. Uh, Seattle at three and three take on the four and two Los Angeles Chargers in Los Angeles. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: the Chargers minus five. The over under is fifty point five. Uh, this look, I, I, consider me a little bit nervous because of what Seattle did last week in ruining our expectations of a nice high over under. However, it looks like a fast paced back and forth game. It's the highest over under of the week. The chargers love to throw the football. Seattle's capable of doing it. I fully blame the Cardinals for the catastrophe of the Seahawks Cardinals last week. I don't think the Seahawks defense figured it out when they've been as atrocious as they've been all season long and not to the degree where they're shutting down Justin Herbert. So Justin Herbert, uh, we don't know whether he will have Keenan Allen yet. He's been in limited practices. I, uh, I lean that he'll be out. Yeah, I would plan to be without him. But Mike Williams, my start of the week. Justin Herbert's a start of the week as well. Gerald Everett as well. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, – and, and Austin Eckler isn't just because he always is. So start your chargers. Yeah. Um, you talking about the number one running back on the season, Austin Eckler? Is he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were bemoaning. Yeah. You were bemoaning that draft pick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it felt it felt bad a couple awful. weeks a couple weeks into the season. It felt bad, but uh, yeah, Austin Eckler turns out awesome, excellent. I do think Josh Palmer is a sneaky play if he's active. He's still in the concussion protocol, but if Keenan's out, Palmer was uh, targeted quite a bit last week. We knew that Gerald Everett was out with an illness, so. You can keep your eyes on Palmer. Sure. Geno Smith. Is he in play as a – like, would you play him or Derek Carr this week? I would go – The Chargers I, are – I'd go Geno. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Even without Lockett, potentially. Yeah. Uh, the Just the, the matchup is a bit better. Uh, DK Metcalf is enough, and the, uh, the, the, the tight ends have been, you know – sneaky every once in a while Noah Fant starting to get more and more involved for for the Seahawks and he's got I mean he, he's never been a huge producer but he does have elite speed so it's kind of that well one broken play Noah Fant can house it from 50 so I, I would I'd trust Gino a bit more than Carr when we look at Metcalf you see an elite wide receiver yep who may not have his running mate but you play him Kenneth Walker's oh, Mike start of the man. week, 23 touches, 15 routes, finishes the RB8. Please, please start Kenneth Walker and continue to brag about the discovery of a superstar in your fantasy roster. <laughs> I am I am quite hot and bothered by by Kenneth Walker right now. Yeah, and they they're blocking for him. He's he's wiggly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what did you call him? The, uh, the slithering snake. snake? Yeah, the snake run, this serpentine style. Yeah, it's pretty good. The <laughs> Four and two, Kansas City Chiefs take on the San Francisco 49ers, who were three and three. Uh, the boy, there, there's a pretty good chance the Rams lead the division at three and three because they're on bye. Hmm. And the 49ers, the 49ers could lose to Kansas City. The, the line is two and a half, Kansas City minus two and a half. And then the Seahawks could absolutely lose to Chargers. They're five point underdogs. Yep. Wow. It could, I I think San Francisco has a chance. The over under here is forty eight and a half. I last week, not. you do not. last week was obviously a big huh. disappointment, right? They they came out flat. Um, they couldn't run the football. They got behind against Atlanta. Uh, this week, the Chiefs, you know, they've been one of the better offenses in football, and the Forty Nine ers are dealing with a ton of injuries on defense. Nick, That's the biggest concern. That that is Nick Bosa is extremely extremely important for whether or not this team has any chance of winning. We saw Nick Bosa miss last week against. I think he's back this week. That, well, that's that's what I'm I'm trying to check on. Uh, if, there was some video of him practicing yesterday. Okay. Um, if he's back, then maybe they have a chance because their their cornerbacks, their safeties, their their secondary's gone. So if they don't have a pass rush and and you get. Patrick Mahomes to just be able to pick apart, uh, you know, a, a a third string secondary due to injuries. I, I don't see how you can win that game. Now, if Bose is there and can cause some sacks in some drives himself, uh, then then maybe they've got a shot. The game is in San Francisco. That's helpful. 
and I'm sure the fans are all going to be rowdy and excited, even if Christian McCaffrey's not playing, just the, the outlook on their season, that they're going for it, that they're upgraded. Uh, but, yeah, if Bosa doesn't suit up, then I, I don't see how they can – stop Kansas City's offensive weapons yeah, at all. You had Bosa, Jimmy Ward, and Trent Williams returned to practice yesterday. From a game recipe standpoint, I like Jimmy Garoppolo as a streaming option this week. Sure. Because they'll have to keep up, and the Kansas City Chiefs have given up 15 passing touchdowns this year. They're like the inverse Broncos. Uh, they Their secondary just hasn't been impressive in a while. So Debo... I think Ayuk is interesting, and George Kittle, you hope to see get further involved against this Kansas City team that, you know, they're going to score points against San Francisco in this one, or at least we presume that they will. They're projected for 25.5 points. Number one in pass rate over expectation, Patrick Mahomes, you, you're going to start him. What are you doing right now? I mean, I think it's worth a conversation. Clyde edwards alaire was the running back four through the first four weeks. There might have been a moment that Jason Moore himself would have swapped the disappointing Austin Eckler for the <laughs> over no, the moon. Not no, that way. Never. Not that. We 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 knew we knew how hollow uh, seems. I feel like you were trying to give Austin Eckler away for about two weeks. No, I was trying to trade up. I was trying to get Saquon Barkley or um, so, someone that I could confidently have another great running back. You never ever ever trade one of the top running backs for anything but another top running back. Well, that's what Clyde was, R running back four through the first four weeks, weeks five and six, RB 50 and 44. What's the truth about Clyde? The, the truth is volume. far more the 50 and the 44 uh, because he is in a three-way timeshare and he doesn't get enough volume to be confident that you can have a great fantasy asset. He had nine total opportunities to touch the ball last week. It's just a matter of touchdowns. Are touchdowns going to come or not? Do you bench him? I, I San Francisco is great against the run. I think he's in consideration for a bench. If you've got other good options, I would. I, you Travis know, Travis Etienne or Clyde edwards helaire I'll go Travis question. Etienne. I, I, I would also go Kenyon Drake. As gross as that sounds, yes, I would too. Yeah, it sounds gross, but it's the right call. Juju, MVS, Sky Moore, McCall Hardman, the box of chocolates at wide receiver. The answer all along was nobody. The answer was nobody. <laughs> That was the that was the argument before the season began. Yeah. The answer is they're looking for another wide receiver. The answer is they restructure Travis Kelsey and they're gonna find somebody to fix this. Whether it's trading for Brandon Cooks, whether it's Odell Beckham for the second half of the year, whatever the case may be. I, I think they're gonna try to find another weapon because they owe it to the, their offense to try to you know, they're a great team. Against this beat up secondary, how many touchdowns does Patrick Mahomes throw this game? I think he throws uh, at least three. That's exactly how I feel. So if he throws three touchdowns, there's value to be had here. Someone has to catch it. Now, obviously, you're 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 playing the the roll the dice. Kelsey, try to Kelsey, get lucky. Kelsey. Kelsey will get one of them. Eileen, Juju, if you got to put another player in, but obviously you're taking a gamble on whoever it's going to be. Yeah, and Sky Moore has yet to step up in a big way. Uh, let's move on here. The Sunday night football game, Steelers 2-4 and four, taking on the 3-3 three and three Miami Dolphins. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Miami minus 7. The over-under is 44.5. This game, <laughs> what are you expecting? I expect the Dolphins to come out strong. I really do. The, the Steelers are... are coming off an emotional high victory when they were at home. The Dolphins have lost a couple games in a row while they've dealt with the the concussion scandal gate, whatever you want to call it, of Tua and Teddy. But Tua is back. He They are at, at almost full strength now, and I... I'm, I I see a message being sent this week. I think the Dolphins are going to crush the Steelers. Well, Tyreek Hill is the number one wide receiver in football yeah. right now in total yards, and uh, he has been absolutely dominant. He's on pace for almost 2,000, and with Waddle, look, Waddle's fifth in the league in total yards. So you have two of the top five. Uh, the the Would you believe they could do it? In Miami question has been answered. Because they've done it, yep. even with Skylar Thompson, Teddy Bridgewater, and company. I was very upset 
when I found out that this was a Sunday night football game because I came into this week just, I mean, my DraftKings lineup, it was, I don't care how much Tyreek Hill costs. He was in my lineup, and it was like, no, he's not on the main slate. Tyreek Hill is going to just go for 200 yards this game. You said, uh, you mentioned the Sunday night game. Good news for fantasy players, Raheem Mostert practiced in full on Thursday. So in in terms of not having to have some pivot plan, if you were, if you were counting on Mostert, Look, I think it's going to be an okay for game, game for him too. Mm-hmm. Um, Chase Edmonds not not going to be in my lineup. Nope, you can't do it. Uh, what about Mike Gesicki? You uh, riding the lightning from last week, or you? I I think that it's at least interesting. Uh, I know it it certainly feels like chasing, but over the last three weeks or so, his involvement has started to go up in terms of. I mean, you are uh, the tight end whisperer, Mike. Routes, well, Jawan no, Johnson. Don't put that on me right now, but I'm just Taysom Hill. Uh, I'm yeah. Well, uh, who was better? Um, <laughs> it, I just I'm saying I I think that Gasicki is interesting. I don't know if it's interesting enough to full out just okay. I'm putting him into the lineup and we're, we're going to see what happens. But you uh, like at this point, if Gasicki has another heavily involved game, perhaps the the transition has actually happened. At if, least you know athletically he's capable of doing of big things. Yeah, he is a superstar when it comes to athletic profile. That is nice when you're taking a shot at someone that you're unsure of at tight end. So he can get it done. I would not start him in chase last week just because you've got half of his games where he has two or fewer targets this year. And yeah, he had seven targets last week, but that was, that was not with uh, Tua. So uh, a different quarterback, a different situation. Uh, you know, right now with a healthy Tyree Kill and Tua in tow, I I I lean moving away from yeah, Gesicki. Like last week, he ran forty two routes that's, and that was is great. targeted seven times. So that that's it's not necessarily just the target number that I'm looking at because the targets per route run is sixteen percent. It's not fantastic, but if they have moved in a direction that okay, we, we need to get Gesicki out there running. Because that's he was not doing that at the beginning of the year. Then you can get opportunities. Can I grab uh, both of your hands and, and walk you into the swamp, please? Uh, <laughs> let's go into the swamp where we take uh, normal metrics and we divide them by like you know three. Because Najee Harris this year not hit the twelve fantasy points mark. What? In any game. Deontay Johnson. Hey, guess what, Jason? I'm going to give you eight, the eighth most targets in all of football, but I'm going to give you the wide receiver 38. Ooh, nailed that one. And then uh, we've got Pat Fryermuth, who's coming off the concussion. Can you get Luth with the Muth? Yeah. I, Is he I, the I, truth? I, I think you can Ooh. get uh, I think you can get Luth this week. There, If I am right that the Dolphins are going to come out hot on offense – Score a lot of points. I think that the the Steelers are going to need to throw the ball. The matchup is fine. He has been. I mean, be, prior to him going down the last game, here's his fantasy finish. Uh, speaking of Pat Fryermuth, he was eighth, tenth, bad game, seventh, and then got injured. So, the, you know, I, I mean, he didn't play even the majority of snaps in that game. So you throw that one out. He's back. He's healthy. Obviously, any player coming back off of concussion, there's a little bit of a worry of. What if you take another hit? You know, we saw this with Cameron Bray, especially with Pat Fryermuth having had multiples already. So that's my only fear with him. As far as on the field playing, because he's a tight end, he doesn't need to do much. You know, if you go out there and you get five for 45. Exactly. Then you're you're probably with a touchdown okay. shot. Yeah. Najee Harris or Raheem Mostert in the same game. Most. Ooh. Oh, man. I said that quick. And Najee's felt- only playing 66% of snaps. We talked about him not going over 12. Last week, uh, he hit 11.9 fantasy points, which was the peak of the year, but he's 14 for 42 on the ground. Just had the touchdown. Yeah. That was the key. I lean Najee. Okay, and then the wide receivers. Are you messing around with Deontay, Pickens, Claypool? Not at the, this point. The Dolphins, they've given up 31.9 points per game, but when you adjust for schedule and you look at their opponents and what the expectation was, they're actually 10th against yep. them and these are not you know the picket trubisky experience i yeah I, i'm not going to mess around with it right now deontay's fine uh but the other two guys but uh there is at least a a, a good amount of smoke starting to billow up okay in, in the skies of a chase claypool trade yes uh, there are a few teams that are looking for claypool and 
The uh, Packers. I'm, sure. I mean, just somebody could go after Claypool, and I'm saying that more of uh, – Sure, if you want to stash Chase Claypool from the – because he's on the waiver wire. So you could pick him up, stash him. Uh, the trade deadline here is in like a week and a half mm -hmm. or so. So you'll have clarity on that pretty quickly. But also, George Pickens, the extreme – Opportunities will be – He's extremely talented, but right now you don't have sensational uh, quarterback play giving you the ball. But if you cut out a piece that needs targets, yeah, Pickens becomes far more interesting. I'm, I'm definitely more interested in that than the – maybe Claypool will land somewhere and be relevant because I think he, I think Claypool can go and help a team, but I don't know if he goes and helps sure. your team. Yeah, but um, like Claypool you can get for free. Pickens you probably have to trade for him. You got to Pickens him up off yes. of uh, like it through a trade. Yes. The Bears, 2-4, and four, taking on the New England Patriots, 3-3 three and three on Monday Night Football. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, New England minus 8. The over-under is 40. Hey, look, this could be the game that, uh, you know, Thursday night wasn't. We could get that low-scoring affair in this one. How do the Bears score? Against the Patriots, probably a field in New goal. England. I mean, uh, he's Justin Fields runs for 150 yards. I mean, if if, if they're going to play hot hand at running way. at running back with Montgomery and Herbert, if Mooney's not on your roster and Komet and Justin Fields isn't being played, like I guess you start Montgomery and you hope. But, yep. Yep. but right now, this is the best. This is the best team in football against the running back position. So already, you really want to just like pure volume for one running back. And if that's not going to be the case, now we, you know, actions speak louder than words. The yeah, words yeah. said that they're going to share the time. Sure. The actions have showed, you know, a very disproportionate Montgomery uh, flavor. But you can't start Herbert. I agree. I agree. So yeah. that I mean, it's a pretty simple Chicago Montgomery and no one else, right? That is one hundred percent the case. You're you're not playing anyone from the Bears, and it and might if, rain in this game. Oh, oh come be on. wonderful. Hey, the Bears beat the Niners when it rained, so maybe that's their superpower. Uh, on the <laughs> other, on the other side, there are some great plays, and it starts with Ramondre Stevenson. Oh, but we're getting we're getting <laughs> Belichick, man. No, no, I because Damien Harris Damien labeled Harris. as a full participant on Thursday. Yeah, and 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 he's but he got was till, labeled as he's one. got till Monday. I'm still starting. I mean, I yeah, I'm Ramondre's got to be started. I am starting Ramondre under any circumstance in this game. Uh, he is he is absolutely in. He's been great, and there's no reason to believe that even if Damian Harris is active and he's totally healthy, that Ramondre would have a bad game. Maybe they could both have good games, but I won't start Damian Harris. I agree. In in, in if he's active, I think the biggest trap in this game would be a fantasy player trying to play a wide receiver from the New England Patriots. The Bears are really, really good in terms of not giving up fantasy points to the wide receiver position. In fact, number two in schedule adjusted, number four in total points given up. They, they're they about 21 a game. Now, trying to project where that goes between Myers and Parker and Thornton, it it it, it scares me a little bit if I'm going to go into Monday night relying on one of those guys to help me win. Agreed. Jacoby Myers in a PPR would be the only one that you could feel somewhat confident in. I agree, and, and we don't know if it's Mac or Bailey. Right. Uh, I believe it looks more likely as time goes on that it's going to be Mac Jones. I know. Mac, Mac, Mac. Or zap, zap, zap. One of the two. <laughs> you got mac uh, It's not as good. Uh, no. No, it's not, it's not That's great. That's like someone threw a Big Mac at your face. I feel like Mac Jones tried. Oof. If someone threw a Big Mac at my face and then said, you got mac mad respect. <laughs> mad respect. <laughs> it would bounce off your face and you pick it up yes, and you'd it, enjoy it. You're like, I'm ashamed. But at the same time, I now have a delightful big well, Mac. Mac, 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 you probably get three thrown at your face. Holy baby. Oh, well, that's six patties. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have any injury updates? Uh, producers, do I, anything yeah, you want to? Yeah, we got Lions running back coach Deuce Staley says they're taking it one day at a time with Swift. Oh, gosh. So every day we continue to check with the doctors. So they're making progress. There's still no decision. Not to mention, like, we've seen him active and then disappointing before. Sure. Uh, and uh, Steve Wilkes of the Panthers has not named the starting running back against the Bucks for this week. Again, we we believe it will be Deonta Foreman, but it is that's just speculation. 25 fab just spent on Chuba Hubbard in our league of record to try to figure out who that is. Yeah, you can burn fab too. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, who, who did that? Uh, there were three bidders. Yeah. Uh, it was the one that bid on Deion Jackson last week with big money. Oh, excellent. So uh, excellent. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and head into the face-off.
Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Guess we had time for it. Um, mm. Look, I, I lost again. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I like where things are going. This Jason, is, this is great. I, don't, I lost by a few points again. Yeah, it's been close. And uh, this is my fourth consecutive shaming. Oof. Now, I went back into the archives. I was shamed a total of five times last year mm -hmm. across 18 weeks. And I have put together quite the run, gentlemen. You have. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a special time. What if I told you I really am enjoying the costumes and I'm really getting uh, into that? Well, Dan, all right. Good, good would news. you believe Let's, me? I would say spin that wheel. So we'll reveal our lineups momentarily, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately. <clears throat> wheel of shame. Well, uh, let's go ahead and spin that wheel right. there, Brooksy. Spin that wheel. We I'm got, getting real used to it. I'm sure it's got getting, a I've caveman, got, a rainy day. And uh, what is oh, this? Oh, what is this? Oh, a special. It's just called four in a row. <laughs> yeah. We hijacked the wheel <laughs> to celebrate your greatness. Oh, what a special time to be alive. <laughs> the special champion of four weeks in a row. He's got to wear the hat. You might want to lower your chair a bit. Um, um, the, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you deserve that. Yes. So he This is, is so much worse than like one of the other ones because it commemorates my failure and it also... <laughs> It also it just makes next week so much scarier. Oh man! If I drop another one, so good. Boy, I've got my. Uh, for those listening at home, they got me a crown with a number four on it. Yes. So we can always remember this moment. And a scepter. And a scepter that has been. It looks like handcrafted. Yeah. So um, some real work went into this. Yeah, we good went work. to the, we went to the forge. Yeah. And uh, F O U R. Jeez. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Who went to the forge? Yes. <laughs> well, this is, uh, if, uh, for what it's worth, the crown is very uncomfortable. So, oh, oh um, even better. Watch as you, they say it is. The crown you, is It's very yeah, it's heavy. heavy. Yeah. Kick us off with your quarterback then, Andy. Yeah, I should probably do that, um, but I'll let you guys start. Okay. All right. Go I ahead, uh, I am going I went, the quarterback this week. We've we've looked at uh, roster percentages and they're all over the place. Uh, I have personally gone back and forth from several different options, but I landed on Joseph Burrow at yeah. 6900. That is my is quarterback. Is that your quarterback too, week. Mike? No. Okay. That is my quarterback as well. So I'll jump in real quick. I went with Joe Burrow 6900 against the Falcons. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic play. Um but I, I'm going money where my mouth is. I, I honestly, I did try to make the Davis Mills stack, but it just oh, nice. like the cash it freed up. It wasn't, it did, wasn't it, meaningful it, enough. Yeah, I didn't feel like I could get enough more big players, so I went away. But I went with my start of the week. I went Dak Prescott against the Detroit Lions at 6,700. Okay. Um, seems like holding this scepter. Like this is a good time to remind people. I did win the Millie Maker last year. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's fair. That's that doesn't fair. matter anymore. Oh, I know, Jason. Who's Jason? Uh, at running back. Yeah, let's hear. All him. right, here's at, where the overlaps come. In. Yeah, at yeah. running back. Maybe. Um, maybe. I assume all three of us have Josh Jacobs. Yes, we do. Okay, Josh Jacobs is 6,500. DraftKings Sportsbook line. He's minus 135 to score a touchdown. Like the odds are that he scores, and at that price point, you got to put him in your lineup in cash games. And I paid up for Saquon Barkley at 7,900. He has obviously been as good as anyone in uh, fantasy football. So I'm hoping against the Jacksonville Jaguars, he gets it done. Well, I do have Josh Jacobs, as you mentioned, 6,500. My big spend at the running back position was not Saquon. It was actually the number one fantasy running back, Austin Eckler. Uh, I don't think Keenan's going to play. Even if he does, Eckler's been catching so many passes in a PPR format. Uh, I lost with Saquon. Maybe I'm holding it against him last week, but 8,300 for Austin Eckler, my other running back. Love it. Uh, at 5,800, I will take Kenneth Walker the third against the Los Angeles Chargers, possibly the juiciest of all matchups for the running back position. And 5,800, that price is just right. Uh, do, did you start us? Uh, and you have Josh Jacobs. Yes. Well, uh, we both have Kenneth Walker. Yeah, in the is flex. flex? Yes. Yeah, in flex, yes. I've got Kenneth Walker at 5,800 as well. So um, who's your flex, Mike? My flex is Kenyon Drake at 5,100, okay. taking right. on the Cleveland Browns. Okay, All right, so looking you, a little bit spicier today with J.K. Dobbins not practicing. You must have uh, some good wide receivers. I'll tell you mine. 
and then you show me yours. All right. Uh, I've got CeeDee Lamb at uh, 6,800 and T. Higgins at 6,400 to stack with my Joe Burrow. And I went with Alec Pierce, 4,600. Okay. Um, that's, uh, you know, uh, the matchup against Tennessee, long bomb touchdown waiting to happen. Yeah, I uh, I also have T. Higgins at 6,400 with my Burrow stack. I have Chris Godwin at 6,300 with Tampa Bay taking on the Panthers. And then uh, very late pivot. I did have Alec Pierce as well, Jason, but I went with Garrett Wilson mm, okay. at just 4,500. Yeah. Very, very cheap against the Denver Broncos. I am hopeful that it's a PPR situation. Not counting on anything big, just five or six yeah. catches. High risk, high reward. High here. risk, high reward. Mike, who are your three wideouts? So I got T. Higgins. All right. As, I mean, the the, the price, uh, and thankfully, will mitigate some of the Joe Burrow action from both of you. CeeDee Lamb, because I have Dak Prescott, mm -hmm. I had to get the stack in there. And then I also have Chris Godwin at 63. Those are Monday. three juicy wideouts. Yeah. Uh, Jason, your tight end in your defense? Well, to make it work, I spent down. Yes. I've got the mustache, Greg Dulcich. Okay. 2500 okay. the yeah, so rock cheap. bottom bare minimum price. And the... New York Jets. Yeah, I'm the same. I oh. have Dulcich in the Jets. <laughs> Jason and I actually had, until I pivoted off of Alec Pierce, we had the same lineup except for two players. And what's and insane impressive. about that is I had that ex the same two players. I was going back and forth between whether I would go Godwin yeah. and uh, Austin Eckler or whether I would go Saquon Barkley and CeeDee Lamb. We almost had a fully matched lineup. That would have been the first time ever. Yeah, we build these completely apart from impressive. each other. Uh, if you can't tell. So I have my uh, tight end. I have my start of the week, Evan Ingram, at 3,300 against the New York Giants. That revenge game. Yeah, yeah, PPR could and work it's, out. It's the Jets. I mean, I don't, I don't care if it's Russ. I'm always so comforted Brett when we spin down on defense, and then we have the same one. Oh yeah, it's great to just watch each other. I'll be By like, the way, oh, good. no <laughs> stupid defensive touchdown is going to win this. You guys for built out this beautiful scepter for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. You know, the number four. Yeah. What about giving me a fourth wideout? What do you guys think? I think you could the, use it. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. That does it for today's episode of the show. I'm breaking this streak. I'm breaking this scepter. I'm breaking this scepter. <laughs> we're, uh, we're going into the weekend with a lot of exciting games. Good luck out there, Foot Clan. See you Sunday, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.